Well, hello, hello there, Uber Tuber Rubers and Tuberettes alike. It's a short talk in the, uh, you know what, uh, part of the trailer kind with the old guy. That'd be me. And what would an old guy be talking about on a Thursday afternoon, you reckon, before Memorial Day weekend? Well, let's talk about rice. <laughs> I uh, was coming home and thinking about what I'm going to do for dinner, and I thought, well, you know, I got some hamburger that I fried up the other day, and they only used half of it, so I stuck the other part in the fridge. And I had a can of beans, only used half of it, uh, ranch-style beans, they're pretty good. And I thought, well, look here, you got, you, got, you got hamburger, you got beans, all you need is rice. So I went down to the store and got a, a box or two of this stuff. Now, this is about a buck cheaper than the national brand, I believe it's called Minute Rice. Speaking of uh, Minute, how many minutes are you talking about here? And, and I just want to read this to you, just this is a little on the comical side. It says, bring water to boil in a medium saucepan, medium, not a large. Uh, return to boil. What does that mean? Reduce heat to simmer for five minutes until water is absorbed. Let's stand for five minutes. That ain't right. <laughs> I tell you what, if you've ever cooked this stuff, I, I, I fired this up at 6.30. I mean, I turned the heat on the, the, the saucepan. It's full of water. It hasn't come to a boil yet. It's been about six minutes. <laughs> So when we say minute rice, we mean kind of more like half hour rice. <laughs> and uh, I was talking to the lady at the grocery about it. I said, you know, I was checking out and she was saying, hey, you know, I don't know why they call this instant rice. And I said, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> I've been thinking the same thing. Instant compared to what? <laughs> like, a, you know, a glacial age or something. <laughs> but when you're hungry, you know, five minutes seems like 10 or 20. So... I'm going to sit there and let that rascal boil over there for probably a good 25 minutes. And I don't care what they say about letting it simmer and all that junk. I just cook it until it, you, you take a little dab out and, and chew it up. See if it tastes right. And if it does, then you drain it off or you, you can let it simmer if you want. But anyway, I never mind. That's, that's my cooking theory. Everything in, in, in old guy single land, here's how you cook. Everything goes into one pot on one, of, on one stove top. So I'm going to burn up some rice in there and get her going. And then I'm going to get to throw the hamburger in. You drain the water off first. Stir the hamburger in and then stir the beans in and, you know, throw a little salt and pepper on it and you call it dinner. And so that's kind of what we're doing here today. Now, if, if you saw my video earlier, and uh, I, I hope you did, it was about a two-minute thing. Talk about a frustrating day. Oh, that, that was just nuts. I walked into the thing knowing we're going to need a generator. And yet, I didn't do anything about it until we really did need a generator. But by then, uh, we were told to go down to the shop and pick one up. And, of course, that one wasn't there. Uh, some of the construction guys are probably using it. Well, good for them. I hope they. I hope it worked for them because I couldn't figure out the thing the last time. We fired it right up. Boom. Goes, boom. Flame on. And we couldn't get power out of the 110. Where's the reset? There's got to be like a circuit breaker. We couldn't find it. So anyway, they went down to a rental place, my guys did, and uh, that's about the time I made the video. And um, I, I must have been sitting there for an hour and a half from the time they left till the time they got back. So anyway, they got back. We start the thing up. Turns out my cord's fouled up. It, it, the generator is smart enough to know you got a bad cord, so it wouldn't run the thing. So we parked the truck close enough to just plug the breaker directly into the generator and uh, kept rolling and I, I just rewired the end it was it was pretty bad I, I don't know how that happened but it, was, it looked like someone had stretched the the, the wires out <laughs> somebody put a wire stretcher on there when I wasn't looking but anyway talk about frustrating that, that that's one of those days where you know I was thinking earlier and uh, one of my earlier videos about uh, about demons and and you know how we're in a war a spiritual war and, uh, you know, these guys can play dirty pool, and I don't want to blame everything on demonic forces because that gets nuts. But the, uh, the point is, is that I don't know, you know, you may be under assault and not even know it. But I tell you what, we were down there, and we almost went right through a phone line. I somehow succeeded in missing entirely the, the phone line marks, which wasn't hard to do. There's a little tiny orange mark on the ground here. 25 feet on the other side is another one. Hey guys, buy another can of paint, will you? And uh, so, in other words, I entirely overlooked that. So we were chopping too close to the phone line, and we took off the outer sheathing, the rubber, the rubber coating, the insulator, and on just one side, about like that. 
So we got down and studied it real good, and it was a metal sheathing inside, thank goodness. And uh, so the phone gum we called it in, the phone company guy came by, the USIC guy came by, everybody's happy, we, we just covered her up, and uh, we buried it, and uh, it's, uh, it's even, we even brought a jumping jack in, which brings up another story. <laughs> As we were using the breaker, the breaker broke, we, uh, I guess, overheated it or something. And now that breaker's junk, and that, that's a real nice little breaker, that Milwaukee thing. In the last eight months, I've burned that sucker up, and that, that thing's a great tool for getting through dirt. Because when you're down there digging around plumbing stuff, you can't afford to be swinging a pick like a madman, but the dirt won't break up with a shovel, and so what are you going to do? And so you gotta you got to vibrate it out little at a time, and that little breaker does a wonderful job, <clears throat> or it used to. And so I'm going to see if I can get my guy Jay down at the shop to, to help me out. Maybe he can get this thing to get warranty to hope. It'd be, great, it'd be good to get a free one, but, you know, if i got to buy a new one, I will. It's worth it to me. When you're out digging and, and you don't have a breaker, you're up a crick. And, I mean, it can be done, but, yeah, call me in three days and I might be done. Because just dig, digging through this dirt sometimes, it's just, it's just nuts. So, anyhow... After breaking the breaker, <laughs> after wasting an hour and a half trying to get a generator and finding my cord was bad and we fixed the cord and kept moving and all of a sudden, near the end, <laughs> it's like 4.15, the young guy goes, <coughs> Esteban goes, uh, <coughs> boom, this is a bummer. What? He lost the key. What key? The key to the truck. He was in another truck, a Ford 150, uh, F-150. He can't find the key. It was on his belt. It was on a, a chain link thing. And I guess it snapped off. He broke the ring or something. It pulled off when he wasn't looking. I don't know. Anyway, that key is gone. So, <laughs> things get woolly. We, uh, I talked to my, my boss, uh, Dimitro, and said, Hey, man, do we need to get a jumping jack on this? He says, Yo, yeah, you do. I said, Man, that's going to take me another hour to go down and get it. He says, I'm going to send... There was two guys that were coming up with a breaker. So I called those guys. I asked them, hey, can you please turn around? I mean, you just went to the shop, got the breaker. Could you turn around, pick up the key for the 150? Well, they did, and they brought the wrong key. <laughs> so I was going to load up all the busted up concrete in the back of that truck, but that didn't happen. So it's still laying on the ground out there, but we at least got it out of the way. But uh, golly, what a day. And, uh, you know, sometimes you think, man... Oh, some days are definitely better than others. <laughs> some days you're just awfully glad to put that stinker in the rear view. And uh, but I, I just wanted to kind of counsel with you a little bit, or, or you know, compare notes, or you know, shoot the breeze, or you know, what what do old guys do anyhow. And uh, I, I just want to say that you know, don't let don't let this stuff get you down. Everybody has mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. If you're a human, and everybody screws up. And boy, did I screw up today. <laughs> but the, uh, the situation is we are operating under uh, a new head. Uh, we are operating under forgiveness. We're operating under the, the grace of the Lord God himself. And so in operating in grace, we got to remember to show kindness. So, you know, a good thing is I didn't blow up. I didn't tear anybody's head off. I didn't jump down in anybody's throat. I mean, everybody has a good day and everybody has a bad day. And and it wasn't like anybody was trying to, to screw around. It was just things happened. And um, I just I wanted to think, when, when, you, when you want your life to mean something, when you want your work to be significant, when you want to make a contribution to the world before you pass on, what would you like to contribute? And I think what we'd like to contribute would be something out of the good news, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, the good news is that you are forgiven and you are welcomed and you're allowed to try as hard as you can to do what's right. And guess what? He knows that we're going to screw up. He knows that things are going to go off the rails. He knows. And he still allows us to make those mistakes and then hopefully to learn from them a little bit. So next time I'm going to insist on carrying that generator. But so at least I learned one thing. Don't count on a circuit breaker that you can't reset because you, you can't figure it out. I, I went back after the guys were gone for oh, over an hour, and I found the circuit breaker on the back of the house. And, oh, look, there it is. Click. I turned it back on. 
I turned on the breaker, boom, 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 and I went to move it over six inches to the right, click dead. So I went back to the breaker again, and it was still on. <laughs> so I don't know what, I hope I didn't break, you know, I hope I didn't burn up something on the electrical in there, but I couldn't get that, that plug to come alive again. So <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's one of the plugs outdoors, which they're probably never going to use unless they got Christmas lights or something. And uh, I hope, you know, maybe an electrician can figure it out. And I'll, I'll tell the boss about it tomorrow that, you know, we may have to have somebody take a look at that. But at any rate, when you think about the significance of your life, they think about the significance of your work. Let's face it, most of us are small potatoes. We're not big shots. We're not world leaders. We're not historical figures. We're just working guys and women. We're just regular old folks. And we want our lives to be significant. Well, how are you going to be? In the ideas of sig, significant, a sign. What is the sign over your life that has meaning? What is the sign over your world that has meaning? And the, the, the sign that has meaning over your world is the cross. Over the cross was a sign, and it said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of Jews, in, in English. In uh, Now I'm going to mispronounce this. I believe in, in Latin it came out, Jesus. Nazarenus Rex Idorem, I N R I, and on old time like you know Episcopal churches, maybe Roman Catholic, possibly Lutheran, you might have seen up there a banner hanging over somewhere near where they're going to do the Lord's Supper, I N R I. You ever wondered what that was? It's the sign over the cross, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of Jews, and the Jews said, "Don't print that to, to Pilate," just said they said. Say instead, he's the one who claims to be the king of the Jews. And Pilate said, what is written is written. Leave it alone. And so I love that sign. It's been one of the most significant things in my life. And, and so we want to work and we want to operate under the sign of the cross, under the sign of forgiveness, under the sign of reconciliation from on high. And if we can do that, if we can carry that off, that would be the most important thing you could ever do in your life. To pass on the peace of Jesus Christ and that's my goal do I succeed <laughs> with mixed results <laughs> mixed <laughs> mixed with what oh my golly that's a ugh, that's a mess but w when we get over it and we get over ourselves we got to admit he's the one at the bottom of all this who started it and he's the one who's gonna finish it he's the one who's calling us home He's the one who he knows you better than you know you. And in all that, we can rest. And that's what you need after a day like this. Get yourself some rest. And speaking of rest, we're looking at a three-day weekend coming on. Go find yourself a place to get away from everybody, please. Get away from the, 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 the traffic and the cars and the noise and the asphalt. Get around green things and moving water and living things. And sit in His presence and remember His goodness and say so. It'll do you good, and that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to go find me a place this uh, weekend where I can sit down in a green place near moving water, and maybe I'll make a video there too. Anyway, anyway, that's that's what today's all about. However frustrating it is, I'm glad it's in the rear view, almost. We haven't done the concrete yet. I mean, the slab patch. Hey, poof, I'm a cemetery. Um, but I can handle it. It's just, it's not, I already told the boss it ain't going to look very good. It's going to look like a plumber came in and did the concrete job, but he said just do the best you can. <laughs> so I'll do the best you can. So we're going to do a water heater in the morning and hopefully have time for a slab patch in the afternoon. And, and then after that, three days off. Yay, hooray. And uh, that's, It doesn't matter much to me. I could work on a Monday if I had to. But I, I, I like coming in uh, day by day and, and facing the challenges and, and see if I can tackle them and, and make it right and keep some something like sanity in between my ears and in my heart and our challenge is to remember him in the midst and frankly I'm terrible at it <laughs> but he's teaching us and that's the point he's day by day he patiently endures our nonsense and, and double talk and, and, and craziness and he's, he's, he's helping us straighten up he's, he's making us into new people and when he's done you're going to be awesome. <laughs> You're going to be somebody indeed to be admired. He's the light of the world. He's the hope of, of the nations. 
He's the only hope of mankind. And when you call upon him, he hears. So don't forget that when the wheels are falling off. <laughs> That's the first thing I forget every time. <laughs> but he's helping me remember. And I'm helping you remember a little bit too. Have a good day. Bye-bye.